Today, I'm crossing the beautiful country of Sweden on this, the X2000, Sweden's high-speed tilting train that'll zip me from the capital city of Stockholm on the east coast to the country's main port and second largest city of Gothenburg on the west coast in just a few hours. Join me, Jetaway Joe, on this train journey where we'll check out the seats, facilities and just how high speed this train actually is. Our journey begins on a pleasant summer's day in Stockholm, Sweden's capital and largest city. Stockholm Central Station is Sweden's busiest railway station and with the combined commuter rail platforms, metro, tram and bus links outside, it's Stockholm's main transport hub. So I've finally arrived at Stockholm Central Station. I'm going to be catching the half one train over to Gothenburg on the high speed train. It's going to take about three and a half hours to cover the 460 or so kilometres over to the west coast. Let's go. Opened in 1871, Stockholm Central Station took four years to build and the architect behind it, Adolf Wilhelm Edelsvard, also designed other major railway stations in Sweden, including the ones at Malmö, Uppsala and my destination today of Gothenburg. The stunning facade of the station opens up into this beautiful entrance hall with its decorated ceiling and statement lighting. From here, it leads into the station's main hall. This main hall was where the original platforms were right up until 1925 when the platforms were moved to their current present day position. Today this grand hall is a stunning waiting room and has plenty of places to stock up on food and drink ahead of a journey. Ample seating, toilets, luggage storage as well as a couple of pubs and restaurants if a sit down meal is more your thing. Oh I'm so tired. I'm sure you all want to listen to me moan about how tired I am. The joys of travel everyone! But after a couple of hours killing time in the station, it was time to board the train from platform 10 for the 1329 service to Gothenburg. After a few minutes of waiting, the train pulled into the station and despite everyone having an assigned seat, the scrum to get on board began. These trains first entered service in 1990 as a first class only service that had a meal included and use of the train's fax machine. Second class was introduced in 1995 for commoners like me and that's where I'll be sitting today. Sitting down, the first thing that struck me is the leg room. There's more than enough space to kick back and relax. Don't forget, this is in standard class too. There's a small pocket for storage, power sockets to the left, a large tray table that can easily fit a laptop and a bottle holder in front of you. The seat overall is huge with good armrests and there's even recline making the journey all the more comfortable. There was only a few minutes to settle in before the train pulled out of the station, a couple of minutes behind schedule. Departing platform 10 heading southbound the train bypasses Stockholm City Hall, crossing the bridge over Nordstrom before tunnelling under Riddeholm Church and then crossing another bridge over Soderstrom. It's back into another tunnel though once this bridge is crossed and the train picks up some speed. This final tunnel runs under the island of Sodermalm until it emerges again at the Arstabrunner bridges with us crossing the eastern bridge, the older of the two built in 1929. This network of bridges and tunnels coming out of Stockholm is pretty impressive in itself.
It's a really comfy and smooth ride on the X2000, which tilts when travelling at high speed. This tilting mechanism enables the train to maintain a high speed while navigating Sweden's curvy, Victorian-era built rail infrastructure, although the journey to Gothenburg today is largely straight. These trains have proven popular among the Swedish, cutting journey times by 10-15% to compared to regular services. This makes it competitive against domestic flights, and with Swedes taking a more eco-friendly approach to travel in recent years, has actually meant that capacity on these trains is now an issue. After 50 minutes, the train pulls into the first of three station stops on this route down to Gothenburg, Catherine Home Central. After a minute to drop off and pick up passengers, the train then races across the Swedish countryside towards the second stop of Skovde. This stretch of track is the quickest on the route, with a maximum speed of 125 miles per hour, which is the same as the East and West Coast Main Lines, the Midland Main Line and the Great Western Main Line back in the UK. Other countries like France, Germany and Italy may scoff at 125 miles an hour, but by Swedish standards, this is quick and has made this train so popular. Over an hour after leaving Katarine home, the train pulled into Skovde, again for a quick minute just to pick up and drop off passengers. Leaving Skovde, it's then half an hour to the final stop of Hill Younger, at which point I was feeling the hunger and decided to tuck into my 7-Eleven dinner of a chicken Caesar wrap, some sour cream Pringles, and yes, I ate the full tube, and a banana. Upon leaving Hill Younger, I decided to stretch my legs, walking down to the first class cabin, which had a 2-1 seat in layout. Standard is in the usual 2-2 configuration that you'd find on trains, with a mixture of airline style seats and tables. There's also a bistro car on the train with its own seating area, and fridges full of sandwiches, salads, snacks and various drinks. Seeing these full fridges made me regret about stocking up at the 7-Eleven in Stockholm. Some of these salads and sandwiches look great, so if you're thinking of taking this train in the future, don't worry about the snack situation. Back at my seat, I reclined back and settled in for the last 45 minutes of the journey, where the scenery changed from farms and plains to lush green rolling hills, lakes and rivers as we neared the west coast. Soon enough, the industrial landscape of Gothenburg, Sweden's second largest city and its main port, 
came into view from the carriage window as the train slowed to a steady trundle into Gothenburg Central Station. I arrived into Gothenburg Central Station bang on time at 20 to 5 in the evening, making the total journey time of 3 hours and 12 minutes to do the 246 miles between the two cities. After a long day of travelling though, it has to be said... God, I'm that good. That is one long day. Anyway, that's enough about me moaning for the second time about how tired I am. What to say about SJ and the X2000? This was a comfortable, easy and effortless journey across the country. I paid a total of 585 Swedish kroner for this ticket, which is around £44 sterling, and with the high levels of comfort and space, seat amenities and the speed of the train, I'd say this was excellent value for money. Have you or will you be taking this train in future? Let me know in the comments what you think. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, Please drop me a like and maybe subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.